Hello again everyone and welcome to the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage. You are looking at the Necky Supernova of 1957. Um, I have been, I think in the last video I made I showed you guys <laughs> my uh, roundabout way of showing you how this little revolving needle plate works. It's a very clever idea um, and it works. There's a lever underneath and of course you uh, you turn it to the left and when you do it uh, it releases this. I took the foot off because it was easier to see what I was doing and it's a little wonky or maybe I was a little wonky in the video I don't know maybe both. In any case um, wanted to show you guys I'm going to be you if you look closely you're going to see staining. Now staining is uh, easier to see on lighter colors especially these off-white cream colors. Um, and one of the things that, uh, one of the last things I will be doing is going in and cleaning this. And we'll do a video on how do you get stains out of paint and do you get them all out? Eh. We'll, we'll, we're going to find out. Uh, one of the things I did in an earlier video, or I think I did it, uh, but there was tape here. Uh, you often will see tape uh, where people have put any kind of tape, usually a masking tape of some sort. <clears throat> and they did this because they were trying to... Um, establish um, uh, you know their seam allowances and there was no marker. Modern machines have markings and even a lot of the vintage ones would have um, <clears throat> markings on the needle plate so you would know where to uh, where to place your seams when you were sewing. And anyway um, I did this months and months ago. I put lots of sewing machine oil on the tape and over time it's not a quick solution but over time as you can see uh, the tape, because it's old and brittle, you'll notice it's it's literally just came up like that. Now I still have some residue here that I can, then again I will probably you know, take my sewing machine bottle and put more oil here. Uh, oil is your friend because it's the least aggressive thing you can use, I believe, to, uh, to remove things from the finish of a sewing machine. Let me get my bottle and we'll, we'll see. And again, this, you know, I've been basically had set this machine aside for a while. I actually need to go back and look at my, my videos of it. It's been so long to remember what the heck I was saying and doing with it. Uh, anyway, you can see I'm just putting the oil here. And you just spread it around with your finger. Again, sewing machine oil uh, is not going to hurt the paint finish of these machines. And um, it... It is a great way to soften up old things like glues that stick to these machines. Now sometimes you can take the oil, take a little bit of it here, and you can sometimes try to get, in fact, I'll put a little here to see, you know, just to test it to see what it'll do. It would help if I move the camera there. And you can see I'm just rubbing it here into the into the finish. Um, you know, you can take a, a Kleenex or a, or a cotton swab and see and you'll know because take a clean Kleenex and you can see there's yeah there's some stuff here I think you can see it in the light there but again this is a very slow process the faster you can clean a machine typically the more aggressive the product you want to be careful uh, but anyway I'll be trying different things I've shown you guys products to clean machines with before <clears throat> and I will be demonstrating some of these things um, uh, as I go in to clean the body of the machine. But anyway, just wanted to show you guys this uh, this little tape trick. Now you don't have to wait months and months normally. I ended up doing that for other reasons. Uh, got busy and anyway we'll just let this sit and we'll come back in a day or two and that oil should help again with softening the glue. Um, and then I'll start going over the cleaning of the machine and uh, then we will uh, we'll go to thread the machine. Uh, I always tell you guys one of the best sources of learning how to thread a machine is the uh, manual and I highly recommend you get the manual not only for threading but for other purposes but it's sometimes helpful to see it in a video because uh, some of these manuals you know they you know they had diagrams and drawings and sometimes they're they're uh, clear and sometimes not so much so I will be uh, I'm going to try to remember to do that with my machines because I've had people looking back at some of my older videos and say hey can you show me how to thread this machine but of course I don't have the machine but it's a great idea for a video and um, for some of you who 
uh, you know, just just want to see it other than what the manual says. So I'll try to remember to do that for you guys before this machine is listed. And then another video I need to make is to talk to you guys about the bobbin tire. Uh, one of the most amazing bobbin uh, winders ever created in a sewing machine is for this necky. I think I've talked about it before. There are springs that move it up, down, and sideways. Very clever, very costly to manufacture, as you might imagine. Um, but getting the right size tire for this is a bit more of a challenge than it is for most machines because the Italians wanted to do something unique and special, and they did. And it is a glorious machine, but for restoring purposes, it's a little more challenging. But uh, take heart, we will, um, we will investigate. Uh, I've gotten them before, it's been a while. But uh, anyway, just wanted to show this to you guys and let you know that progress is being made. And uh, we will see you in the next video, and hopefully we'll start to get her cleaned up, get the tire, get her threaded. Uh, I'll do these in different videos so I don't keep you guys for an hour, as I have been known to do in the past. And at some point, we will try to get this machine up and going. Thanks for watching, folks.